Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor of ClassicsToday.com and Finster, climbing around to the back with random reviews from the overflow room. There she is. Yes. Oh, my goodness. She gets all the way up here. She can actually do it. She can. There she goes. There she goes. Up she goes. Oh, my God. Can you believe that? That is that is pretty, pretty, pretty special. Okay, she'll be down shortly, believe me. Anyway, here we are getting my overflow room reinstalled from its previous incarnation with millions of boxes of things, which I'm moving slowly, I'm moving it gradually, we're working in reverse alphabetical order. So we're down to or up to the T's, depending on how you look at it. And I have here three discs. Um, they're actually rather, rather interesting. Um, very interesting, actually. And, oh, I'm looking forward to talking about them with you. First, we have The Twilight Zone. This is three discs of 40th anniversary collection, uh, four discs, pardon me, of Twilight Zone soundtracks. And this is really, really cool. Original soundtrack recordings on Treasury, whatever that label is, Silva Classics, it's part of the, you know, the big film music company or label that does all kinds of movie scores and whatnot. And this is really cool because the people who wrote this stuff, I know, she is just such a hog. She's taking up all of my, I know. All right, thank you. Taking, she's the star of the show, no question about it. So anyway, but the people who wrote these scores, oh baby, Bernard Herrmann gets one disc to himself. Jerry Goldsmith gets a disc to himself. Then there's various, Marius Constant. Um, let's see who else, Nathan Van Cleve. And Renee, I can't even see the name, Gary Google, but a little against. And let's see, Fred Steiner and uh, Jeff Alexander and Leonard Rosenman. Well, he's, he's well known. Franz Waxman did one. Quite a collection. I mean, I love Twilight Zone. I mean, who doesn't love the Twilight Zone, right? But who knew that so many well known film music people actually worked on the project and did splendid work as well. So this is. This is really a cool collection. I, I just, I love it. And I have it under its own thing. It's not like with movie music, it's under T. TW for Twilight, so it goes up there. And look at this, we're finishing this, this thing. Then we're gonna have to push down this way as we start to fill up new shelves. I can hardly wait. After that, we have, oh, the Norwegian composer, Gert Veit. Now, Gert Veit was like totally unknown a few decades ago when this thing came out. Um, it contains, it's on C-Max uh, with the Royal Philharmonic under Per Dreyer. You have his suite number one from 100 Folk Tunes from Hardinger. He never got to 100, or he may have gotten to 100. We don't really know because it, it, some of you know the story. He wrote tons of music. This is Opus 151, but he kept everything in a barn in his, in his um, you know, studio up there in Hardinger, wherever he lived, and they burned down. And he lost virtually all of his work, except for that which was published or was in another location or could be reconstructed. And it's a real shame because he is a major, major, major 20th century Norwegian composer. And a lot of it has been reconstructed. And of course, it started coming out on Bis and Naxos, including, you know, at least three other suites of 100 folk tunes from Hardinger. And this also contains his harp concerto number two and the tone poem Water Sprite or Nicken. And it's really this, when I first heard this, I went, oh, wow, this guy's really something. And I really wanted to hear more. And I had friends at the Norwegian Music Information Center and we started chatting about it. And then all of a sudden these recordings started to appear. So my major Gerrit Veit collection, including his concertos and other things, is uh, upstairs in the main body of work. This is the only one I have down here in the overflow room, and it's the disc that started it all. It really is, and I, I, I can't recommend his music highly enough. It's wonderful, wonderful music, and I've done some videos about him. And so, you know, take a look. I mean, here's the, there's how you spell it. And, and if you don't know his music, you're really missing something that's enormous fun. And start with these wonderful little suites. They're tiny miniatures based on Norwegian folk tunes, but harmonized often in a quite modern way. 
sort of the Norwegian bar talk or something like that. But, but it's really, really fun. So he goes up there. And then last but not least, for this little batch of three, because like three somethings is all I can do unless I'm working on one composer or theme, is, is Erki Sven Tour, T U U R, Tour. A really good contemporary composer. We've got his Symphony Number no. Three, his Cello Concerto with David Geringas, and Lighthouse with the Vienna Radio Symphony Orchestra under Dennis Russell Davies on ECM. Um, Erki Sventor is one of those sort of post minimalist kind of composer guys, or I mean, is he post minimalist? I don't know. You know, it's, we say people are pre or post. I don't know what that means. I really don't know what it means. All I know is that. He really wrote some wonderful music. Of course, this disc is called Flux. I mean, Flux. Don't ask me why. There's nothing fluxatious about it, as far as I can tell. But the music itself is quite splendid. And, uh, you know, not splendid enough that I didn't keep it in the regular collection, only because it's a single disc. You know, some of these single disc things, I just keep them down here in the overflow room because actually, for me, um, it's easier to find it because the collection down here is not in flux. It's, it's fixed. It's not, it doesn't have an excess of fluxitude. And so it works very well for me. So there we go, Erki Sven Tour. Oops. And those three, I mean, three discs which are kind of symbolic of wider things, right? The Twilight Zone of the contemporary film music Bonanza which we're currently going through, and, and Gerd Veit, a wonderful composer who, who came into his own in the past couple of decades and now has, you know, probably a couple dozen or more recordings of his works that are available. And then Erkis Ventura, a wonderful contemporary composer, um, and many wonderful contemporary composers who we should all be getting to know. So thank you for joining me, friends. Keep on listening and take care.